Welcome back to Ace Recaps, where we dive deep into the most thrilling cinematic experiences. Today, prepare yourselves for a roller coaster ride through the realms of horror and mystery as we unravel the chilling tale of Phone Booth, a 2022 Hindi masterpiece that will send shivers down your spine. Or at least, that's what we hope it does, because honestly, if it doesn't, we might have wasted the last two hours of our lives. The story begins with a sorcerer who is determined to plunge the world into a dark age. However, if history has borne witness, whenever the world is facing imminent doom, heroes were born to protect it. Unfortunately, this time around since all the heroes were busy, we have to settle for these two dimwits, Major and Gulu. Since they were young, they always preferred creepy ghosts over humans, and now they even live together where their apartment is decorated with all sorts of spooky relics. With their favorite one being Raka, which they found in an old dumpster. Nothing says homie like a cursed doll from the trash. One day, Major is seen bathing in blood when suddenly Gulu wakes up in a sweaty haze. He thinks that the nightmare symbolizes a bad omen, but Major doesn't seem to mind as he's been waiting for their lives to get interesting for quite some time now. Having no jobs will do that. The both of them have recently started an event management company and get ready to host their first Halloween party. Their fathers consider them to be failures and have decided to cut them off if they don't start earning some money soon. Which is why they are both so eager on making this venture worthwhile. They've tried multiple businesses together, but none of them ever saw any profits because honestly, a monkey can come up with better ideas. They pray to Raka and ask for his blessings in their future venture before they lose access to their parents' wealth. Eager they were, like a bear in a hive, hoping their new business would truly thrive. With ideas so lame, like a monkey's game, they prayed for success, to earn some fame. That night, they set up the Halloween party with an eerie ambience, but nobody seems to show up because one of them forgot to distribute the flyers. Surprise surprise. Just then, Raka's eyes go out, and when they try to fix it, the both of them get electrocuted and pass out. They wake up to find their party to be a grand success. Out of nowhere the venue is filled with a young crowd and the both of them are astonished looking at all the beautiful women. Because what else would motivate these two? Regini walks up to them and introduces herself as a dancer. Both Major and Gulu are instantly captivated by her beauty and argue over who gets to ask her out. Together, they initiate a synchronized dance routine and as they are all having the time of their lives, Major and Gulu are interrupted by the police, asking them to evacuate the private property. As they look around, everyone has disappeared from the dance floor. Were they hallucinating from the shock, or were they all ghosts? On the drive back home, the both of them can't seem to stop fantasizing about Regini. They decide to fix this by swallowing some green pills. Within no time, they are on cloud nine, tripping balls and driving in the sky. Don't do this kids, it's not cool endangering the lives of others, you can jump off the Empire State Building for all I care. As they continue driving, a witch with twisted feet steps in front of their car, trying to cast a spell on Major and Gulu. Unfortunately or luckily, since the both of them are as high as the Eiffel Tower, they don't spot the witch and run her over. Oopsie daisy. They realize what went wrong, and spot the witch passed out in the corner. They see that her feet are twisted and decide to relocate her limbs themselves. With all their might, they forcefully twist her legs back. This causes her immense pain and her screams are heard in space. Turns out their medical expertise is on par with a drunk chiropractor. I mean at least they tried to help, right? Wrong. Her screams so loud, they reach the stars, echoing through the cosmos, leaving scars. Major and Gulu, with faces so pale, realize their methods were sure to fail. They realize that her feet are incurable and continue arguing about what to do next. The witch uses this opportunity to sneak away from the two dimwits in hopes of fighting another day. As Major and Gulu continue looking around for her, someone is seen stalking them from afar. The both of them go to sleep that night, but are awoken by an invisible force. They gather all their courage and try to find the culprit, but it's just Regini stealing their yogurt. Major is convinced that his charm is what's making her stalk the two of them. When they both try to hit on her, she straight up rejects them, breaking their hearts. Smooth operators these two. When she tries to convince the both of them that she's a ghost, they burst out in laughter, which is when she shows them her true strength. Now that they finally believe her, she explains to them that she's a wandering spirit who accidentally strolled into their party. There she realized that this was the first time she's meeting humans who can see ghosts, and don't even fear them. But as she listened to the both of them speak, she understood that they were idiots who nobody takes seriously. Which is why she's come up with a business proposition to help the both of them make a lot of money. A business proposition, so tempting and sweet, helping lost souls, while earning a treat. But little did they know, her motives were veiled, a secret agenda, that would soon be unveiled. She plans on possessing people, which is when the two of them show up and exorcise her, guaranteeing them fame and success. Major and Gulu discuss the proposition and reject her offer, claiming that they wouldn't be able to live with themselves if they cheat other humans. What a noble pair of dimwits. Wow, they do have some ethics. Low ones, but ethics nonetheless. Just then, the landlord shows up at their doorstep, 
insisting that they pay what's due in the next two days or they will be evicted. Confused as to what must be done, they decide to steal Regini's idea. Okay so much for ethics. They decide to become real Ghostbusters and help people instead of scamming them. Later that day, their fathers show up and when they tell them about their new business venture, they get slapped across their faces. They try to convince their fathers that this is a great idea, but they are soon cut off from the family funds, hoping that the two boys finally get a real job. Well, that backfired spectacularly. Over the next few days, Major and Gulu work hard at making their business a grand success. They put up a website, paint their truck, try on different outfits and even research on different ways to exorcise an evil spirit the right way. As they eagerly wait on their first mission, they get a call. While preparing to leave, the person on the call claims that a ghost went up his ass, which just turns out to be a prank. Ah, the classic ghost up the butt prank, who knew ghosts were into haunting the hindquarters. As they continue waiting, the internet makes a mockery of their business and they even receive numerous prank calls, frustrating the two. One fine day, they finally receive a call about a man claiming his daughter has been possessed. They immediately suit up and head out, driving hundreds of miles to get to the old house. As they enter, the parents of the girl tell the Ghostbusters that their daughter has been wreaking havoc throughout the house. The two excitedly run upstairs to check out the ghost, and restrict the parents from entering the room with them. Because what could go wrong? When they go in, they spot a little girl possessed by an evil spirit. They try reasoning with it, but she just starts assaulting the both of them. She smacks them with a stick and throws them around the room. Fearing for their lives they hide under a bed and come up with their next plan of action. They start pretending to be a famous actor, and get the evil spirit to reveal her true identity. The spirit comes out of the little girl's body and claims to have died in a hit and run case a few years ago. The father of the little girl was behind the wheel and didn't even try to help her, which ultimately caused her to lose her life. She was the sole breadwinner at home, and after the accident her parents were left with nothing. Which is why the evil spirit vows to never let that man be in peace. Totally justified if you ask me. Regini shows up and comes up with a plan. Major and Gulu go up to her father and demand him for a million dollars to pay the family he destroyed. Hey, whatever works to settle that karmic debt. The man agrees and gives them the money. They drive up to the spirit's house and meet her parents. They plan on giving them just half a million, but Regini tricks them into giving them all the money. This reassures the spirit that her parents will be taken care of and she finally finds everlasting peace. Back at home, Regini tries to convince the two of them to partner up with her, and help many such spirits in pain, and even make a lot of money. When questioned about what benefits she receives from this partnership, she reveals that when the time comes, she will need just one favor from the two of them. But she isn't willing to disclose it just yet. When Major and Gulu hesitate, she seduces them into accepting her offer. Well, that's one way to close a deal. Easiest business negotiation ever. Over the next few weeks, the trio are seen traveling all over the country, helping restless souls find peace. All the dead people at a morgue come to life and attack the doctors. When they start inquiring with the spirits, it is revealed that the doctors harvest organs and sell them to the rich. They have the doctors arrested and set the spirits free. A family calls them and when they enter the house, we see that an old lady is possessed and wreaking havoc in their home, even using her own son to build a house of cards. When they ask the spirit what's wrong, he claims that he was standing under a bridge that collapsed and killed him. That bridge was built by the old woman's son and now he's hellbent on getting his revenge. The trio promises to rectify the mistake and pay up the man's family so that the spirit can move on to the afterlife. Another mansion is haunted by a security guard, on further digging, they realize that the owner stole land from the grandkids of an old woman. He agrees to right his wrong and her spirit finds peace. This way, everyone in the country comes to know of the miracles performed by Major and Gulu, making them rich and famous. A sorcerer by the name of Atmaram, doesn't seem too happy about this. Atmaram, the sorcerer, a villain so vile, plotted and schemed with a wicked smile. His jealousy burned like a raging fire, as Major and Gulu's fame rose higher and higher. He uses restless spirits to do terrible things for money. He does this by promising the soul's salvation. Hundreds of spirits are seen worshipping the sorcerer and he selects one of them to send to the afterlife for his services over the years. This clueless spirit is taken to the back room, bottled up and kept with all the other prisoner souls. When he finds out that Major and Gulu are helping restless souls reach the afterlife for free, he sends a shockwave towards the two, breaking their glasses. A few days later, a man comes up to Atmaram and offers him a million rupees. He had used the sorcerer to kill his stepbrother, but now he's being haunted by an evil spirit. The sorcerer advises him that since the lunar eclipse is in two days, this is the weakest time for all spirits. This is when they can easily be expunged forever. Major, Gulu and Regini are also seen discussing the eclipse and its effects on souls. This is when she reveals her favor from them. When she was a human, she used to work as a physiotherapist at the Royal Polo Club. Dushant, the son of a millionaire, was at the club when he fell off a horse and hurt himself. Regini was called in to help him out and it was love at first sight. Over the next year, 
the both of them got closer to each other and even roamed the world. One day, while driving, Regini takes off her seatbelt to kiss Dushyant. This is when he lost control and Regini went through the windshield, killing her on the spot. Dushyant just faced minor injuries, but to this day still blames himself for Regini's death. I mean I get sucking someone off while driving, but kissing? Seriously? Well done Regini. We surely need more risk takers like you. After her death, she tried contacting him many times, but he could never see her. He could feel she was always around him which made his family think he was crazy. She gives them a note written by Dushyant where he promises to kill himself during the lunar eclipse on the same bridge Regini lost her life. He wants to reunite with her in the afterlife, but if he ends his own life, his soul will never find peace. Because nothing screams true love like a suicide pact. Regini wants the two boys to stop Dushyant from committing the unthinkable and convince him to move on. Major doesn't exactly buy this story and refuses to help her. Gulu on the other hand sees the innocence in her eyes and believes that she's telling the truth. Gullible Gulu strikes again. Needing the help of both of them, Gulu comes up with a plan. He and Regini pretend to make love in the truck, which makes Major burn with jealousy. That night, as he sleeps, he dreams about the two of them falling in love and moving in together. Because seeing your best bro make love won't traumatize you at all. Early next morning, Regini and Gulu start on their journey but drive very slowly. Regini is nervous that Major will not show up, but Gulu is confident that he knows his best friend. In no time, Major hops off a bike and silently joins them in their journey. Aw, the power of jealousy and voyeurism. At the sorcerer's headquarters, the witch from the beginning of the movie shows up and begs Atmaram to help her attain salvation. He lets her stay there until he figures out how he can use her. Seeing that Major and Gulu have stolen half his business, the sorcerer orders his goons to figure out a way to revive it. They suggest hiring the soul of a software engineer and making him build a website for them to compete with the new Ghostbusters in town. They wait around looking for the perfect applicant, and as a man drives by, they possess him and crash the car, killing him on the spot. While the goons take away his soul to build them a website, they spot Major and Gulu drive by. They fear that they are coming after the sorcerer and rush to inform him. Atmaram suggests sending in the witch to finish them off. As Major and Gulu get off at a rest stop, they decide to pop another one of those green pills. In no time they get high again, which is when the witch shows up. The two look at her feet once more and decide to fix them up. She recalls what they did to her last time and runs away crying. Talk about employee of the month awards gone wrong. When she gets a few miles away, Regini trips her and asks her what happened. She requests the witch's help in taking down Atmaram and saving the souls of millions of people. Meaning that her plan isn't actually to save her boyfriend from ending his life. Wait, so she was lying this whole time? I'm shocked, shocked I tell you. When Atmaram comes to know of this, he is enraged. No other soul is willing to fight off Major and Gulu because they all fear them now. The sorcerer decides to deploy his ultimate weapon, Lady Diana. Ooh, the suspense is killing me. Major and Gulu, tired of waiting for Regini to return, decide to head on their way but are stopped by Lady Diana. She uses her hair to throw the two around and beat them to a pulp. When Regini returns to help them out, Lady Diana takes on her form to confuse the two. After a fierce dance battle, Major cuts off her hair, stripping her of all her powers. Lady Diana cries her eyes out and runs back to Atmaram. She informs them about the ghost helping them out, which puts things in a better perspective. This is when Regini decides to reveal the truth. Dushyant and her did in fact meet with an accident, but the both of them passed away. This was set up by his stepbrother who wanted all of the inheritance. They even paid Atmaram to imprison his soul, and Regini is now on the mission to free him so that they can be together forever. She isn't able to take on Atmaram all by herself, which is why she lied to Major and Gulu so that they'd help her. Gee, who could have seen that betrayal coming? They feel betrayed by this and decide to head back home. At the same time, Atmaram casts a spell, summoning Regini's spirit to his chambers. Atmaram claims that the next day, during the lunar eclipse, he will be able to harness the power of all the spirits and unleash total chaos onto the planet. As all good sorcerers dream of doing on a daily basis. Major and Gulu who are on their way back home are suddenly interrupted by a spirit who saves them from driving off a cliff. He says that after the three of them helped him find salvation, he hangs around the cliff and possesses people who are about to drive off of it since it's a dangerous curve. How thoughtful of him to return the favor by, possessing people. This news changes their mind and they decide to go looking for Atmaram and save Regini. Not knowing where to look for the sorcerer, they keep driving around until Atmaram's goons lead them to the cave. They suit up and frightfully enter, where they see Regini trapped inside a bottle. As Atmaram summons all the spirits to finally end Major and Gulu, they fear the end is near as they are no match for the evil sorcerer. Suddenly, the cave starts to tremble and Raka shows up. Speak of the devil doll. Gulu uses this opportunity to free Regini and a lengthy fight scene commences. They all take on the spirits and Raka is left paralyzed by the sorcerer's spell. Some supernatural bodyguard you turned out to be Raka, 
As an argument ensues between Otmarm and his goons, Gulu uses this opportunity to steal his wand. Using the power of the mystical wand, the trio summon all the souls they help set free, who work together and take on the sorcerer. They finally manage to open the gates of hell and send Otmarm to his final demise. Regini frees her boyfriend Dushyant and they reunite after being apart for a year. Major and Gulu finally set free all the souls that were trapped, and even send Regini to the afterlife with the love of her life. The movie ends as we watch Major and Gulu drive off into the sunset with Raka in the back, on a mission to save more lives. The sorcerer defeated, his reign of terror done, Major and Gulu had truly won. With spirits now free, and peace restored, they drove off into the sunset, their deed adored. That's all folks, if you like dumb humor as much as dumber plots, smash that subscribe button. And pray this recap was more entertaining than the movie, or have your soul cleansed and purified.